Federico Valverde has made a real breakthrough this season and has become a key player at Real Madrid. In this video, we'll show why the Uruguayan is so awesome and what makes him so unique. Let's go! Valverde appeared in the Real Madrid structure in 2016, having moved from the Uruguayan Peñarol for 5 million euros. After playing for Castilla and going on loan to Deportivo in the 2017-18 season, Fede began to gradually be invited to Los Blancos' first team. Until the current season, Valverde did not have a permanent place in the lineup. The percentage of time spent on the pitch never rose above 60% of the total. As you can see, Federico did not have a stable rise in playing time from season to season. Valverde's transition from an important player to a key one this season has come about for a number of reasons. Firstly, of course, is the progress of the player himself. In particular, the powerful end of last season helped, where he played an important role in the Champions League playoffs and the victory in the tournament. The assist to Vinicius in the final is the Uruguayan's doing. Second, it's his versatility. There are very few positions on the pitch that Federico hasn't covered yet. Such a player is a godsend for any coach. Thirdly, the fact that Kylian Mbappe decided not to move to Real Madrid and remained at PSG helped. With the Frenchman's arrival, Federico's playing time would obviously suffer. Although this is rather an indirect argument. Let's first of all highlight Valverde's merits. By the way, folks, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video. You'd make us happy and you won't miss our next video. In recent months, Valverde has accustomed fans to his fantastic performance so much that they've gotten used to it. But they shouldn't have. After the Champions League win over Leipzig, Carlo Ancelotti said, It's too early to call him the best in the world in his position. We need to wait a bit. Well, thanks for the comment, Carlo, but we have to determine what position Fede considers his. He does so much work and manages to be present on so many areas of the pitch that you can't just attach him to a specific position. We'll show Federico's importance mainly on the example of the recent match against Atletico, in which he scored a goal and played a key role in the victory. And the goal is not the most important thing here. The starting segment of the match proceeded with the initiative for Simeone's men, who created several dangerous moments at Courtois' goal and could take the lead. Given all that, it was Valverde's actions that made a turning point in the game. We're talking about the beginning of the attack, when Madrid opened the scoring. Fede picked up the ball in his own half on the right wing in a situation where there were simply no good options for a progression through pass. The Uruguayan progressed the ball himself, moving past Atletico's midfielders at speed. He ended the run with a pass to a free area of the field, where Real Madrid had an advantage. It was Valverde's run and the opponent's reaction to it that ruined Atletico's structure and put Los Blancos in a comfortable position. Now, at each stage of the attack, the opponent's reaction is delayed. The result is a great goal and Valverde's reaction to it speaks for itself. Such sprints combined in the development of an attack and the destruction of an opponent's formation are Fede's thing. In this episode, he picks up the ball deep on the right wing. During the run, he gathers three opponents around him. This destroys the formation and delivers the ball to an area where Real have an advantage. Valverde's role in the second goal was more banal. He scored. Goal area finishing after an intense sprint. This episode is rather impressive in the context of his overall work in the match. When defending, he manages to drop lower as a right back to help Dani Carvajal. During attacks, he finishes from the goal area, having previously broken away from all opponents. Real Madrid used a 4-3-3 formation. As part of this formation, Valverde started as a right winger, but only nominally. In practice, he covered two or even two and a half positions. Sometimes Federico dropped lower to the right back position to secure Dani Carvajal, who either joined the attack or moved towards an opponent. But more often, he just dropped down and became the fifth defender in the line. The Uruguayan's discipline allowed Dani to play more aggressively with one of Atletico's forwards, Griezmann or Felix, the one who dropped deeper after the ball. With the score of 0-2 in the second half, aggressiveness was no longer needed. Real acted passively, but controlled the game. At this stage, the right-back position generally became the norm for Fede. 
the team moved back to defense, and the Uruguayan adapted. But when at rare moments Real went to press, it was the ubiquitous Fed, who turned out to be the second player in the first wave of pressing next to the forwards. Central midfield is another area where Valverde's voluminous role helped. He moved to the central midfielder position. If he managed to be there faster than Modric, and Luca finished this episode as a right midfielder already. Due to Valverde's efficiency, the speed of Real's reaction to losses increased greatly, and the center did not fail. Valverde worked not only taking the right positions in the formation, but also in moments when the team had not yet managed to adopt a defensive formation. Here, against the backdrop of Atletico's rapid progression, Modric did not run all the way for Koki. But this did not become a problem. Valverde caught up with him and worked to the penalty area. At this moment, Fede's versatility is especially noticeable. In terms of position, he covers Modric in the center, but looks around and is ready to make a sprint to the right wing if Carvajal, who went forward, cannot cope. As a result, Modric had more energy to create attacks. Carvajal got the opportunity to act aggressively. Valverde did his job and glued the entire area. The best description of Valverde's position in the match is a big volume player on the right wing of the field. Valverde's importance to Real Madrid was no secret before, but now he's turning from a useful option for cunning coaching plans into an absolutely key player in the starting 11. This was largely influenced by the player's great form, as we've already said. But Casemiro's departure also contributed to Fede's increased role, more specifically how Ancelotti curves with replacing him. Right now, it's hard for the coach to balance the team without Valverde. Valverde is able to play as a winger, while still managing to help midfielders. It's very important for us in terms of tactical flexibility, the Italian said. According to the formation, Casemiro's stand-in is Aurelien Germany. In general, he shows himself brilliantly, but he still doesn't produce the amount of work in defense that the Brazilian did. From here, Valverde's importance grows along the chain, who manages both on the right wing and helps the center. That is, Germany receives the help and relief necessary at this stage of his career. In the first match, after Casemiro's departure, Ancelotti directly emphasized Valverde's increased importance with the help of midfield. Germany showed character and was excellent with the ball. The whole midfield did a good job thanks to Valverde's help. He is very important when playing without the ball. Carlo cleverly chooses a role for Valverde to make up for Casemiro's absence. When Germany enters the defensive midfield area, Valverde is the nominal right winger. The volume of his work falls on the entire right side of the pitch, and Germany covers the rest. When Cross, who is perfect on the ball but weak in defense, plays in the defensive midfield, Valverde is a central midfielder. He is located next to Tony and concentrates his gigantic amount of work closer to defensive midfield. Basically, Fede just runs instead of Cross. In addition to the amount of work, Federico has become more involved in the game recently. The best reflection of his progress in this regard are the metrics that characterize the participation in the creation. Fede has the best performance in his career by a margin here. Valverde has already scored more goals this season than in any of his past seasons, and he's played in only 9 matches. Fede has 4 goals and 2 assists in them. Carlo Ancelotti also bizarrely expressed his faith in the Uruguayan's attacking potential. I told him that I would destroy my coaching license if he didn't score at least 10 goals in a season. And apparently, the Italian coach won't have to do this. The plan pays and the player's progress indicate that the goal will at least be completed. Guys, that's it for this episode. Stay safe and we'll see you very soon.